We are also building, as we are speaking here, new tools to help drive conversion rates, to make teams more responsive and reduce time on market for their vacant units. Hello, and welcome to Sink or Swim, a weekly podcast brought to you by RentSync, where we take a deep dive into the prop tech, multifamily, and rental housing industry. In each episode, we uncover the technologies and strategies used to help overcome operational challenges and increase the value of your multifamily investments. So let's get into our conversation today. Hello, and welcome back to Sink or Swim. I'm your host, Nicolina Savelli, and you're listening to Get Synced, where I take a tactical approach to helping those in multifamily improve their marketing and advertising efforts. Today is a special episode, as I have Rent Sync's VP of Product and Technology, Michael Matola here, as well as Diego Von Sostein, who is Senior Product Manager at Rent Sync. Welcome to the show, guys. Hello, thank Thanks you. for having us. No problem. Now, before we get into today's conversation, can you both expand on those titles so our listeners can get a better sense of what those roles entail? Um, Michael, I'll I'll have you go first. Sure. So I'm the VP of Product and Technology. I look after the technology and engineering teams. Uh, I work with the business stakeholders and collaborate with various departments in our organization, uh, specifically the product teams, but also uh, with customer success and marketing as well. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Michael. And Diego, do you mind sharing what a senior product manager at RentSync is all about? I will try. So (laughs) I like to think of my role as two roles. One is about helping shape up the vision for the RentSync platform, where we want to be, what strategies we want to use, are we solving the right problems, and then collaborating with sales, marketing, support, talking to customers. And the other part of my job is to be able to deliver on those things. So working with development teams, setting metrics, monitoring the metrics after the release to understand if the feature of the product we launched solved the problem. Awesome. Thank you so much, Diego. That sounds like a complicated job and I'm glad I don't have it. <laughs> so today is a pretty significant moment in RentSync's growth. Since, since I've been at this company, it's something the product team has been working towards. And that is the launch of the new RentSync platform, previously known as the Lyft system. Now, I'd like to start this conversation by speaking a bit about some of the milestones that have led us to this point in RentSync's, formerly known as Landlord Web Solutions, product development. So, Michael, can you tell listeners a little bit about how the Lyft system emerged and how this product has evolved into the RentSync platform over the last 10 years? Yeah, absolutely. It emerged kind of a necessity, I think. There was an opportunity that was there for a company to come in uh, and transform this industry's online presence. So we started off as a service company. We built websites for many years. We launched about eight websites in our first year. And every one of those customers that we launched brought something to the table for us in our growth of the Lyft system, uh, whether it was a new widget on the front end website or whether it was a new module in our back end. All those, that customer feedback was very valuable to us in the early days of the Lyft system. Uh, a few years later, we, we introduced ad syndication to a repertoire, which became our flagship product and was called RentSync at the time when our company was laying on the web solutions. The Lyft system evolved into, from being a basic property marketing tool or CMS or a website management tool into a product suite uh, or a collection of tools and services that we offer. Uh, we added on lead tracking tools and analytic tools and now to become what is now a software platform. So those unfamiliar with the RentSync platform, can you speak to why an update is so important? I I think both of you can probably provide some insight around this, but Michael, I'll have you start kind of as to why the RentSync platform needed to, or the Lyft system needed to become the RentSync platform. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think from a technology point of view, there's something to say about it, and also from a product standpoint. And uh, you're talking to technology and the product people at RentSync, <laughs> so we're the right people to answer this question for sure. Uh, I think there are three winners in this. You know, RentSync itself uh, is a winner from launching this new platform. Uh, our customers are winners, and our partners will be winners. From RentSync's point of view, it's really about the more modern technology, more easily adaptable technology, uh, better processes, better infrastructure, especially as information continues to flow in and out of our systems uh, to relevant parties. We're really excited about this release and. We've been working on this for very long. We have a, lot, a big team working on this and we've worked really hard to, to get to where we are today. I'm really proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish and do in this time. Over the course of software development many years, this company has been around for about 10 years now when the Lyft system first started building, right? Many companies decide at some point to reinvest in their platform and 
building from the ground up. And that's what we did. We built, we rebuilt from the ground up, replatformed our software. The main driver of that was so that we can keep up to date with technologies, the latest changes in technology while being able to be as fast as we once could be. When we were a small company, we could be really fast and agile. As we grew, we acquired technical debt. You acquire, you know, there's processes and things that have to be followed uh, that slow you down a little bit. So this platform removes that and allows us to get back on track to building uh, systems and features and release technology for our customers in a much faster way. So this, this we're rebuilding a new, inf- new foundation based on everything we've learned in the last 10 years, and that allows us to scale much faster than before. From a customer's point of view, that allows us to serve our customers better. From a partner's point of view, it allows us to work with our partners better. And all in all, it just allows us to adapt to be whatever the customer needs us to be moving forward. So with that said, Diego, we know that there are some major improvements to the RentSync platform that are being rolled out, specifically on the marketing automation and lead automation side of the platform. So can you speak to those two areas and what that means for users moving forward? For sure. So when you think of the multifamily industry, we are helping pretty much marketers and leasing agents be more efficient when it comes to advertising the vacancies they have and filling those with uh, tenants. So we are investing in a lot of automation with a new platform so that both marketers and leasing agents can do their job more quickly and more efficiently. So for instance, we heard from leasing agents how much time they have been spending on manual data entry. That means, you know, for instance, creating guest cards in their property management software every time that a lead came in from rentals.ca, for instance, or their website. So there was a gap between the website generating leads or ad syndication and ad sources generating leads and the moment when those leads became leases and then tenants. So with a new platform, one of the new features that we have released is the ability to push automatically leads that are coming from ILSs such as rentals.ca and Zumper to the system of choice, the place where our customers are managing the day-to-day for those tenants so that there's no manual data entry anymore. And we are helping give some time back to both marketers and leasing agents in that space. And there are also some other quality of life improvements. They are targeting more specifically marketers in multifamily. So for instance, if you're promoting vacant unit in an iOS directory, you probably want to have quick access to that advertisement once it's live. So you can make changes and see them being reflected. So we are making the ad links, as we are calling it, one of the highlights of the new platform where you have easy access to all of your live advertisements. And also there are some other improvements such as ability to manage multiple websites that you have hosted with RankSync using one account, or even the ability to view all of your leads from websites to ILSs or ad syndication leads in one centralized leads inbox. So all of that has been built thinking about giving some time back to our customers. Right. So really just improving efficiencies and removing some of the pain points and friction points in in this whole leasing and advertising process for, for marketers, which I know myself as a marketer is a huge benefit because time is of the essence and we always feel like we don't have enough time to do <laughs> what we want to do. So this is this is great. Now, when we talk about product market fit, we obviously need to determine who the market or audience is. And I think you kind of spoke to that, but Diego, can you explain who you believe will benefit the most from using the platform and the new features? How will they be able to really step up their game and get their work done? For sure. It really comes down to marketers and leasing agents in the multifamily industry. So we have been talking to a lot of people in that space, from customers we have to other experts in that field, just like us. And we notice how much friction still exists when those two functions are trying to get the job done. So while a lot of those initial quality of life enhancements and new features that I mentioned, they are about efficiency, we are also building, as we are speaking here, new tools to help drive conversion rates, to make teams more responsive and reduce time on market for their vacant units. So I'm going to give you some examples for customers using our ad syndication product with our upcoming release of ad layouts and ad previews. Marketers will be in control 
of what their advertisement looks like at a vendor per vendor. So if you are doing a little bit of experimentation, as uh, many of the marketers that I know are, RentSync is a place for you to do that in the rentals industry. So if you want to put amenities above your property description, or if you want to move some things around, you'll be able to do that, and you will be able to preview those changes before they go live. So you can basically plan accordingly and uh, find what works best. Right. In the meantime, leasing agents will also benefit from some other things that are coming. One would be the iOS autoresponders. So that will enable our customers to set up automated messages that will be sent out every time a prospect comes out or comes uh, from a, an iOS service such as rentals.ca, Zumper, et cetera. So that will inherently help qualify some of those leads that are coming at the top of the funnel, but also while giving back time to agents to follow up on the leads they have in, in their pipeline. Before I go into the next question, a question came up with you speaking there. Can you kind of give us an idea of what that looks like right now without using this kind of functionality? How, how do they have to go through that process right now? Why is that such a time-consuming manual process without any autoresponders? For sure. That's one of our highlights with the new platform and it's coming very soon. So basically, responsiveness is everything. When you have a prospect inquiring about a property at 2 a.m. for some reason, you won't be able to answer that prospect until you're back at the office and until you got you that lead. So people are struggling with the lead volume, which could be a good problem to have if the leads mm -hmm. are high quality. But also now we are in a place where we need to help property management companies, developers be able to get back to the prospect more quickly so that they're more likely to either book a tour or give a call, answer some questions and then move down the funnel, right? So any tools that can help a marketer in the multifamily industry get you that lead sooner will be valid. And the autoresponders will basically send an automated message that can contain, for instance, some extra information on the property that's being inquired about or even if you're using a tool like the booking app we offer, allow the prospect to book a date and a time for an appointment or for a tour. So it's really about make that tool as self-serve as possible so that the marketer doesn't have so much in the leasing agent, so much in their hands. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now let's get back to the show. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Diego. So I know it's a little hard to do on a podcast, but I'd like to get a sense of the user experience of the new platform and why it's built with the customer in mind. Michael, can you talk a little bit about how we've improved the user experience of the platform in terms of some of the pain points previously experienced and how we've addressed them in the new platform UI? Sure. Uh, I think there's just a lot of quality of life improvements and user experience improvements we've done uh, with managing website content, managing pages, for example. I think one of the pain points in the old system was having to go back from list view to, to, to details page view when you're managing page content, for example. And now we combine those two together and have a, a list on the side to quickly access and switch to your pages that you're trying to edit. So you can really manage content in a much faster way uh, than before, which is awesome. I think before too, we just had some lack of functionality and some, you know, we were partially solving some problems for customers and this uh, rebuild and uh, new platform that we were releasing uh, helped solve some of those problems and closes the gap. We were limited by some technology to stay on top of some of our customer needs. And, you know, this platform update removes that and allows us to really follow suit with the customer on demand in real time and are, adapt really quickly to feedback and build new things and better things for our customers. So we've spoken mostly about two areas of the platform, but I know there are a lot of updates and features that are soon to be rolled out. So Diego and Michael, can you tell us what your goals are for the platform in the next one to two years? Diego, maybe you can lead this one. Ultimately, we are looking at consolidating RentSync as a place where marketers and leasing agents and multifamily go to get the job done more efficiently. So we want to help them understand their funnel from lead to lease while providing some state of art tools that will help them drive close rates. 
So real estate, when you look at it, is the largest asset class in the world. And when you think of multifamily, we are already thought leaders in that space. Uh, so with the new platform, we'll be able to move faster, as Mike said before. Every two weeks, there'll be something different from minor quality of life improvements, such as the ones that uh, Mike was referring to, to brand new products and tools. So we won't necessarily be the only people building some of those enhancements. We will also be partnering with people that are the best in what they do in the industry to make the platform, the new renting platform, the one-stop shop for sales and marketing. Michael, do you have any anything to add on that in terms of your goals for the platform in the next one to two years? Yeah, I mean, it's on top of continuous improvement, as Diego mentioned, focusing on better integrations and partners, you know, aligning ourselves with the right people and the right partners to facilitate the needs of our customers and also focusing on reporting and mm -hmm. really being a main contributor and leader in the reporting space for our customers in the industry. Can you uh, dive into that just a little bit for, for me? I, I know that really isn't part of this conversation, but I'd love for people to hear about what your plans are in terms of reporting and, and analytics for customers in the future. Sure, yeah, we've added some reports right now for the marketing ad syndication product uh, to help customers better understand where their marketing dollars are being spent. But now we want to take it a step further and a couple steps further in the near future here as we you know, bake in cost per lead and ultimately get into a cost per lead strategy and really report on where exactly their prospects are coming from and how they got into the pipeline and really report on the entire lead funnel or lead pipeline for our customers. Right. Now, is that going to be in like a dashboard type concept or are they exported reports or is that still a work in progress? Uh, all the above. There'll be some customized <laughs> dashboards. There'll be some canned dashboards that we have available for our customers with with uh, you know the expectations of charts and, and uh, pivot tables and graphs and charts, but then also exportable materials so that they can export that data as they need to and move that data from A to B if they want to push that data into a another tool, we want to make that available for our customers in the near future. Perfect. I ask that just given my marketing background and, and I love a good chart to kind awesome. of just get an overview of, of what's going on. So I know that that's going to be important to a lot of our, our users. So if there was one thing you hope that users say when they use a new platform, what would it be and why? I'd like to hear from both of you on that, but Diego, you go first. Yeah, I would love to see something such as ease to use being a key pillar of this new platform, but I think easy can be very subjective, right? So I'd rather look at how, how responsive we are when it comes to user feedback and our ability to deliver on that mission. So for instance, the new platform gives our customers the ability to submit feedback at any moment. You just click an option at the top right and you share your ideas. So I look at everything that's sent out, I can tell you that. And uh, in many cases, if it's a brand new idea, if I need some further clarity, I will be following up with the person who submitted, not necessarily asking what they want, but trying to understand the place they're coming from, what problem mm -hmm. they have, so that we can get you a solution that works. So by having all those touch points in the platform, either by submitting an idea or if you're switching back and forth between the new app and the legacy app, we always ask you why, why you're moving back. So looking at all that data gives us enough to be able to make the platform better. So I'd love if the next time they went to the new rinsing platform, they saw something and they, they could say, oh, this is new. It actually it comes from a pain point that I had. It works better now. It's more efficient. What I'm saying is being heard. So getting that perception from our customers and being able to move faster is really my expectation for this. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically you're just, you're hoping that the pain points that we previously discussed would basically be resolved through our initiatives and, and, and new features and, and we can continue to replace those pain points with solving them in in the platform. Michael, do you have anything to add from there? I think it'll probably be in line with what Diego is just saying, but I'll ask you as well. 
Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Dago hit it right on. But also, we just want genuine constructive feedback uh, so we can make make it the platform better for everyone. And so I think, you know, I want to hear this is awesome. This helps a lot. Uh, the experience <laughs> you created for us is great. Fantastic. I love it. But also want to know like, how can we do better, right? How can, we, how can we serve you better? What can we do better to make your workflow even easier, right? especially around the reporting side? You know, what is your manager looking for? Uh, what right. reports your manager looking for that we can provide to you to, to to help you reduce your stress with how you have to report upstream uh, to your superiors. Uh, that's where we want to do. And that's what I want that feedback to come back to us. And, you know, if, if it's on the negative side of the feedback, like, you know, why didn't it work meet your workflow? You know, did we miss something? How can we help you? Uh, right. We want that feedback so we can write that wrong and, and make things better for you. So if something didn't work or is not working quite well for you, how can we make it work for you? That's the feedback we want to get. And that's the benefit of this new platform that we can make those changes and help them with that feedback almost not instantly, but pretty quickly in comparison to what we were working on before, working with before. Absolutely. Great. So obviously with any new product, there is going to be a learning curve for users, especially ones who are used to the old platform. You created any resources or training documents to help support customers in this transition and if so, where can they find them? Diego, maybe you can speak to this a little bit. Yeah, that's a great question. And uh, a lot of product management, the work that I do, is about understanding customers, understanding their habits. And habits are you know, a combination of how easy something is and the motivation that you have to do that something and how often you do it. So we're frequently talking to customers to understand what can be improved while looking at analytics that we have in terms of usage and adoption in the new platform to make decisions. So for our users, the new platform has some video explainers for our main features. They can be accessed the first time they visit that feature or any time later on. We basically created something called the resource center. So at the bottom left, there's a green question mark block. You click it, depending on where you are, you may get some extra resources you may be able to watch those videos again, or even reach out to support if you have any questions. And uh, we also have the legacy Rain Sync dashboard available for some time so we can help users make that transition. So they can move back and forth between the two and we collect analytics on that as well. I know that personally, I'm always fearful when a platform comes up with a, a new version and learning that, I think it <laughs> can sometimes take certain people a little bit longer to adjust to change. So I appreciate the the, the ability to go back and forth and, and slowly get familiar with, with the new UI, the new, new features, et cetera. So, so thanks guys for doing that. So now that the product is finally out of beta, Diego, can you give listeners a bit of a rundown of what to expect in terms of timelines? You did mention every two weeks, but the rollout of the new features that are soon to come, is there any timelines that you can kind of provide that they can look forward to? For sure. I will basically give three phases in terms of timelines. So phase one, where we are, the features that we already have that came with the new platform. One is the ad links, as I mentioned before, the ability for the marketer to be able to access their advertisements in our ad syndication network at any moment. The second feature that's also available, the ability to send leads from ad syndication sources to third-party software, such as property management software. Third, the ability to view leads from both your website and from ad syndication sources where you are promoting your vacancies. So basically a new feature that we call the centralized leads inbox. The two types of leads can be viewed in one place. And then the ability to manage multiple websites in the same account. Those are all features that are available. And coming over next month, we will have the ability to visualize an ad before it goes live, the ad previews, and being able to customize how you want that advertisement to look like, ad layouts. Also, the ability to set up autoresponders for ad syndication leads, the ILS autoresponders I referred to. You set up an automated message, it will get sent out, and you can give some extra resources to the prospect right away. And in addition to that, there will be a new reporting system that will have the metrics that the Legacy Rain Sync dashboard offers, plus some new metrics, as Mike 
was talking to, uh, about. So metrics from cost per lead until, you know, lease at some point. And then before mid year, we will be launching some new tools to help drive conversion rates and make lead management easier. So also when it comes to the efficiency theme that I was talking about, we will be by mid year looking into tools and mechanisms to make our ad syndication system work even faster. So if you're making a change, we want that change to be reflected in your listing faster than the way uh, things look like right now, getting as close as possible to real time changes. So those are all highly requested features and ideas from our customers and also some things we are seeing in the market that we believe that we should be taking on to make marketers and leasing agents more efficient. The next few months are going to be quite busy for for your team, I'm sure, but looking forward to seeing that all come out and 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 hearing the feedback. And I'm at the end of the the hard questions for the both of you. Uh, I just want to quickly ask for those looking to connect with you both, where can people find you online? So, Diego, you can you can go first. Perfect. My answer will be a little bit unusual. So the first place where you can find me is in the product. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you go to the new rent sync platform, you're submitting ideas. I'll be the one, the primary person actually getting to those ideas and sharing them with the team. So that's a great place to be giving feedback. And of course, I'm also on LinkedIn. My profile isn't the most up to date profile, but you can definitely find me there. You won't find other people with my name. I don't think so, at least in North America. <laughs> and uh, you can message me there. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Michael, what about yourself? Where can people connect with you? Uh, I would say LinkedIn again. It's a good okay. option. Again, my profile is not up to date. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had to switch jobs in a while. So, But you can reach me on LinkedIn at Michael Matola. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me and for being on the show. And Thank you for working so hard on delivering this new platform and really looking forward to seeing the features and the whole product rollout is really exciting. So thanks for taking your time. I know you guys don't have that much time, but thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. Man. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Nice chatting. And for those looking for all the important highlights from this episode, be sure to follow hashtag get synced. And until next time, keep swimming. You've reached the end of another episode of Sink or Swim. Make sure to visit us at rentsync.com forward slash podcast to access show notes, key takeaways, and where you can sign up to our newsletter to receive free bonus content. If you found value in this show, please also remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thanks for listening.